Yes, so we choose to download the Fiery Command Workstation from their download center we found online using Google. Now that we have it, it's in our downloads folder and you can see it's quite a large package. The version 5 was 500 megs roughly, this one is 3 times that amount. You could also choose to run it using the Fiery Software Manager, which is much smaller, but in this case let's use the full package. Bear in mind, we're doing it on Windows 10, pretty much the latest for you know, March 2020. And then we'll look at how to install it on Catalina 10.15 Mac. Finally, I'll show you how to install this command workstation software using a very simple script so that you can save a lot of time and do many computers in one shot. So let's start by double clicking on the package. This is an executable. And this will extract everything that we need to install it. So it extracts it, in this case, in the same folder. If you want to save time, copy that off this folder on a USB key. And you can carry that with you and save yourself a lot of time. Once I show you how to install it using a script, you'll see how much easier it is to use a script. So inside that folder, we have this folder and the master installer is the one we want to use. So let's run that. Bear in mind, you see here you have a user account control security permission pop up. Well, this means that if you're trying to install this in an office environment, where there's an IT department, most likely the users on which you're installing this software won't have admin rights. So you'll need to engage admin. You can offer them to uh, maybe do a, a log me in to help them. You can offer them uh, maybe to show them how to do it. But at some point you'll need the admin password or you'll need them to do it. I recommend you do it with them, maybe remotely before the machine arrives on site or maybe on site with IT. And you can see where it's going to install it here. They have an SSD drive, it's going to be much faster than a traditional uh, spinning drive. You have to reboot the computer. So let's reboot that. Again, stick around because if you are in an office where you had to get IT to do all this because of passwords, IT will want to probably delete or remove the Fiery Software Manager that it installs thereafter. So I'll show you that after this reboots. So once it's finished installing, there's a few things to review. First off, if you click here on the system tray, you'll see this lightning icon, which is your software manager. Because I'm admin, as it rebooted, it didn't ask me for administration's password for the admin password. But however, if you're installing this for somebody that works in an office and they don't have admin rights because IT locked them down, they would have a pop-up asking for permissions every single time, which can be quite annoying. So if you are installing command workstation in an office, make sure you stick around when IT installs it so that they know about this and so that you can at least remove it if need be. If you open it up, you'll see this window here and that's your Fiery Software Manager. You can choose not to launch it at login so that it won't launch at login. This would be the solution. And you can also um, show additional features, additional software, which may or may not be useful depending on who you work with. While this runs, let's look also at what's changed. So in the start menu, you'll see that it installed command workstation, the hot folders, and also the software manager. There's create that allows you to do variable data. This allows you to profile, but nobody, unless they have a 3100, usually have this software anyway. Uh, this is job flow is similar to Freeflow Core in a way, though Core is better. Integration package would be if you're writing some custom code that integrates with 
the command workstation. Think of it as an API. Language map to have additional languages and remote scan, which can be useful if people want to scan straight to their desktop, for example. As you boot or reboot the first time, things will look like this. You'll have a what's new window, which will show you links to new features, which is quite worthwhile to watch, by the way, because there's a lot of stuff coming up. 6.5 is a major release. And you'll say it's quite blank. So if we click on the plus button, we can see that it doesn't detect anything automatically. If you are on the exact same network, maybe 192.168.1. something, then it will list everything. But if you're not on the same network, it's going to have trouble finding it. So you could do an advanced search. So if we do this and I look for things in my office, let's go for the very end. You see that it immediately lists everything I have available. So I could add the prime link here by clicking in OK. Click Add. There may or may not be a password. If you remove the password, it's going to be blank. By default, it would be fiery.1. Once you've changed it, of course. And so now we have it installed. So to recap, once it's installed, you still have to add a Fiery. If you have to add another one, you can click the plus icon here. And again, go through the same procedure to maybe add A3100. And as you can see, you now have two of them. Now, if we look into the documents, it also creates a folder for impose. So the imposition templates that may or may not be created will be saved here. If you are, again, working in an office, you'll want to make sure that they can remove this pop-up here. Command Workstation 6.5 SP1 on Mac OS Catalina 10.15. This is 2020, and most of the time, if we ever get back out there, this is the versions that we'll have to work with, Catalina and 6.5 or later. Once you've got it down from your USB key or from the Downloads folder, just double click on it. This will do, will pop up. This is what's contained inside this here. Mac OS sees DMG files as a kind of mountable DVD if you want. This is why you have this icon there. The Fiery Software Installer is included in the Master Installer, so you don't need to run this guy. They include both because sometime later on, though you have this installed, you want to get the latest on Installer, so you'll use this one. Now, go click here. If you see a warning like this, click Open. Agree. Drag and drop. Password. Usually on Macs there is no password. If there is, ask the user. And wait, don't leave yet. So we push close. At this point, we can unmount this, we can eject it. So if you're new to Mac, it's worth spending a few minutes looking around. What Mac version do you have about this Mac? will tell you the version number. 10.15 is Catalina. That's the logo or the uh, background for Catalina. Where are my apps? So if you're looking for your apps, you can go to Applications and look for it. In this case, under Firing, you would have it here. You can take those and drag and drop here to create links. 
You can also do command spacebar or click on the magnifying glass. Once again, if you hit Fiery, you'll see this here. The Fiery Software and Manager. Will let you download additional softwares. On most computers, most users that have a Prime NIC or C60 or Versant 80 or 180, they will want to be able to scan to their computers. And so the Fiery Remote Scan will enable you to do that. So you would want to download and install this as well. And I think in the Fiery Remote Scan is um, special in a way, in as much as you can do a scan folder yourself without having to use the software. If you know what you're doing in Mac, you can do a file sharing and you can create your own folders here for this. There we go, so now it's installed. If we start it, we'll get this window. This shows up all the new features. Definitely worth looking into. And then we can add our first server. So if you are on the same network as a printer, let's say 192.168.0. something, that's the base for you and the server, you'll find it automatically here. Otherwise, the host name of this fiery. So when you tap the fiery icon, it gives you the name of the fiery. In this case, we rename it to this. If you're on the same network, this works very well. If you're not on the same network, it can take longer or it might not even recognize it. So the safe bet is to simply use the IP address to guarantee communication across reachable networks. So if I use the IP address instead, then I will reach it. There's no password on this one, so I could just hit login, and there we go. If I want to add another one, and it's not showing up, I can do a search. I can say, look in my network. And it will find out everything. And there we have it. So we now have two fireys connected to our Mac.